In this video, I'd like to chat with you about the concept of IP routing, including some basic information that every single host on the network is going to need to be successful to use the IP network. Let's use this topology and let's pick on Bob once again down here at Computer 2. And Bob is on this 10.1 network and Bob would like to go ahead and communicate with the server. So the server's on the same network, 10.1.0.111. So if Bob's going to communicate locally, he can learn the layer 2 address of the server, forward it to that server, and they can have a nice conversation and party back and forth. Life is good. But what if, what if the server that Bob is trying to access isn't local? Meaning, maybe it's out here on the internet. Maybe it's a server on the 67.83 network. Maybe the IP address is 67.83.12.34 or something else out here on the internet. How in the world is Bob going to get that request all the way out and make sure it gets to the server? Well, Bob can't. <laughs> Bob can't do the whole thing on his own. He's going to need some help from a network device that can move or route that traffic. In this case, it would be a router, an IP router. He'll also need to know that he has a default gateway or a default router that he can use. And it goes something like this. If Bob is opening up a browser or trying to reach a server at 67 67.83.11.22, the first question his computer would ask is, hey, is that IP address 6783.11.22, is that on my network or is it on a different network? And on Bob's computer, if his IP address configuration, the mask indicates that the network is 10.1, he looks at 6783 and says, whoa, that's a, that's a totally different network. What he will do is he will go ahead and forward the frame at layer two to his default gateway. So even though at layer three in the IP packet, it would say the packet's going to 67.83.11.22, in the ethernet frame at layer two, it would have the layer two address of the default gateway that Bob's computer is configured to use. In this example, it's router one at 10.1.0.1. And then when router one gets it, <laughs> the story of IP routing is based on what this router has been trained to do to forward it. So it's very likely in this topology, the router would forward it to the firewall, and the firewall would route it to the router 2, and router 2 would route it to the internet, and the internet would continue to route it through the internet until it reached the server at 67.83.11.22. And to get this ball rolling with IP routing, we need to have the infrastructure, the routers and firewalls and other devices that have all been trained or dynamically have learned how to forward packets to a given destination network. And Bob's computer needs a few basic things. Let's list those right here. And these are great for troubleshooting. If a computer cannot communicate to remote networks or is having a problem, we'd want to check four basic elements of the computer's configuration for its network interface card. One would be, does it have the correct IP address? So if our plan is for Bob's computer to have the IP address of 10.1.0.10 .10, and to have the first two numbers be the network and the last two numbers be the host address for Bob's computer, we'd also want to verify the mask. And in that case, the mask would be 255.255, which means the first two numbers are the network, and then the last two numbers would be 0, 0.0. And if looking at Bob's address, if that address is correct, the next thing we'd also want to check is does Bob have configured a default gateway? Meaning, who does Bob forward frames to at layer two? What router does he forward the frames to if he ever needs to have a packet that needs to reach a remote network? Remote means for Bob's computer, anything that's not on the same network that Bob is. And so part of the IP address configuration would be this router's IP address at 10.1.0.1. And one other component where we're looking at the four core elements for IP configuration on Bob's computer would be, does Bob have a DNS server configured? Maybe the DNS server is a, a Google DNS server at 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8 .8. Or maybe it's the internal server at 10.1.0.111. But if Bob wants the ability to go to remoteserver.cbtnuggets.com or some other website name in the background, he also needs to know who he can use for DNS, domain name system, to make a request to figure out what the heck is the IP address behind that website name. So these are the four core pieces of information that we would want to verify on Bob's computer if we were troubleshooting. One way of seeing all of that information, plus a little more, at the command line is the command ipconfig space forward slash all. And that command is applicable on a Windows computer. We could also, 
in the control panel, go to the properties of the network interface card on Bob's computer, and that's yet another way we can see how that network interface card is configured by going through control panel. In this nugget, we've taken a look at the concept of IP routing, which begins with the client realizing it needs to forward the frames to its default gateway so that the default gateway, the layer three router, can continue to forward that packet in the direction of the final target. We also took a look at the four key elements on a computer that we want to check and verify if we're ever involved in troubleshooting a computer that can't correctly communicate or function on a network. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.